makers of those four distinctively different type tobaccos. Old Briar, Dill's Best, Model, and Tweed present Martin Kane, Private Eye, starring William Gargan. Now, let's see. Your first name is Shirley West. For 20 years, you were the confidential secretary to John Bixby. And according to the terms of his will, you're one of the major beneficiaries. Now, what can I do for you, Miss West? Major beneficiary? Major suspect? Suspect for what? The murder of John Bixby. Oh, now, wait a minute. According to the papers here, John Bixby was killed during the commission of a robbery in his home. Well, that's for public consumption, Mr. Kane. Privately, the police believe that Mr. Bixby was cold-bloodedly and intentionally murdered. And on what do they base that theory? Oh, I don't know, sir. I do know that I've been very closely questioned, as have been the others mentioned in the will. I see. Now, about John Bixby, uh, what business was he in? Well, Mr. Bixby was an inventor and a very successful one. Mm-hmm. Any family? Only a, a nephew, Carl Bixby. Mm-hmm. No other relatives? None whatever. Mr. Bixby was a very lonely man. Now, as regards to the robbery, was there anything of value taken? Well, nothing was taken, Mr. Kane. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, aside from the furnishings, there's nothing in the house of actual value. Well, what about the safe? 
Well, Mr. Bixby kept anything of real intrinsic worth in his vaults downtown. Mm -hmm. The safe contained nothing but his will and his diary. Did you know the combination to the safe? Yes, I did, Mr. Kane. Do you know the contents of the will? Yes, I do, Mr. Kane. Well, uh, can you tell me who else is mentioned in the will? Well... There's uh, Shirley West. She gets uh, half of the estate. And then there's Steve Jensen, a massager. A uh, masseur. Yeah. Yeah, what is this, a French lesson? One who administers massage is a masseur. Oh, I see. Well, anyway, Steve Jensen, a rub-down artist, supposed to have known him for 15 years, gets uh, one quarter of the estate. And then there's this uh, Rhonda Noble. Oh, a most attractive young lady. Yeah, she's a nightclub singer with what you call operatic ambition. Uh, Mr. Bixby's protege. Yeah, yeah, protege. Well, mark her down for a quarter of the estate. Yes, sir. And then there's a $10,000 bequest to his nephew, Carl Bixby, customer's man with uh, Henry Hackett's firm. Oh, got that, sir. And then, Sergeant, down here, way down on the bottom, below his signature, and below the signatures of the attesting witnesses in what looks like his own handwriting, it states, I make the following additional bequest of $25,000 to my friend Henry Hackett. Henry Hackett, broker. That's the list of suspects, the only people in the world who could benefit by the death of John Bixby. Oh. That's Shirley West, secretary. Yeah. Steve Jensen, masseur. Right. Rhonda Noble, singer with Check. operatic ambitions. Mm -hmm. Carl Bixby, nephew, customer's man for Henry Hackett. Yeah. And Henry Hackett, broker. Yeah. Oh, who let you in? <laughs> oh, hi. Oh, quick flash of the badge, a few well-chosen words, and here I am. You dig up a client out of that bunch? Correction, Captain. The client dug me up, Miss Shirley West. Oh, yeah? Sergeant. Take this well down to the laboratory and have it looked over, but looked over good. Uh, yes, sir. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Kane. Bye, Sergeant. What's the picture here, Captain? The picture is murder, Marty, with a fancy frame around it. And the fancy frame is a phony burglary setup. Now, uh, would you care to sort of uh, elucidate on that for me, Captain? Elucidate, eh? Yes. You talk like Sergeant Ross. Uh-huh. All right, I'll elucidate. This place was broken into, but whoever did it was no burglar. The locks were jimmied by a rank amateur. Uh -huh. The locks, huh? Yeah. What about the safe? That's just it. The safe was open better than any professional could do it. Get the figure? Mm, not yet. Well, you see, whoever opened that safe knew the combination of it and uh, tried to make this look like a burglar. Oh, well, wait a minute. According to Miss West, the only thing of value in that safe was the uh, will and the diary. Yeah. Yeah. That puts a poser on the nose. Yeah? Now, why should anybody want to break in here and then uh, open that safe? You're supposed to be a detective. Why, huh? Well, I don't know. Uh, except maybe to get a peek at the will, and then if they stood to gain by it, why, let them have it. Yeah, that's what we'd say. Mm -hmm. Except that when we questioned them, we found out that everybody knew what was in the will. Everybody, that is, except Henry Hackett. Uh -huh. Anybody hear the shots? Well, the servants did, but they're all way over on the other side of the house. By the time they got here, the intruder was gone. I see. Now, let me ask you something else, Marty. How long do you think a burglary like this would last? Well, I'd say, uh, oh, it wouldn't last or take over 20 minutes. Well, this one took over two hours. Over two hours? That's right. Well, now, how would you know that, Captain? Well, it's uh, simple, my dear Marty. You know that uh, massager? Yeah. Steve uh, Jensen. Jensen, yeah. yeah. Well, he was here last night about 9 o'clock. Gave the old man a rub down, then sort of tucked him into bed. What time did he leave? Left here at 10 o'clock, exactly, by that uh, clock. You know, he gets paid by the hour, so Let's he see. checked it. Well, after that, everything was nice and quiet. But uh, we happen to know just about when this burglar was here. How come? Well, you see, Marty, this is an electric clock. It stopped at 11.10. By mistake, the burglar must have uh, knocked out the plug. Now, by the time the shots were fired and the burglar was here, it was 2 o'clock. Now, why should anybody be here over two hours? Riddle me that one, detective. Riddle me that one. Well, these are my friends, Sergeant. The writing down here, way down at the bottom of the will, the bequest to Henry Hackett was done in different ink from that of the signer of the will. It was also written much recently, too. Would you say the handwriting was the same? Offhand, yes. But if you people hadn't got any ideas of the contrary, we'd have to concentrate upon that, and the burden of proof would be on us. Yes, of course. Also, the pens were different. That is, the pen used in the signature and the pen for writing the bequest to Hackett were different pens. Huh? Is there anything else? No. That's about it. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, you'd better take the will. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shall I send him in now, Mr. Hackett? 
Yes, please do. Well, I didn't know it was you. Colonel Henry Hackett, how are you, sir? Fine, Marty. Yes. You know a saying that's uh, come quite recently into vogue? Yes. Old soldiers never die. Come on, <laughs> sit down, Marty. Thanks a lot. Well, I'm yeah. working on that John Bixby murder. Yeah, same messy business, then, huh? Yeah, police been bothering you? Can't seem to get him out of my hair. I see. You haven't gone around killing anybody lately, have you, Colonel? <laughs> it's mister now, Marty. I'm a complete civilian. All right. What about John Bixby, Mr. Hackett? <laughs> yes, Marty. What about him? The police are convinced that someone that was mentioned in that will murdered him. Yes, so they've been telling me. <laughs> Look, sir, this time when politeness is no more than hypocrisy, and this is one of those times. May I be blunt? Fire away. Could you tell me where you were between the hours of 11 and 2 last night? At my apartment. Asleep? No. Were you alone? I'd rather not answer that question, Martin. Well, the only reason I'm asking you is that you could exclude yourself as a suspect if you could prove where you were between 11 and 2. I, uh... I still prefer not to answer that question, Marty. Suit yourself. Now, about that bequest in the will. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Why ridiculous, Mr. Haggard? I was his broker, Marty. Nothing else. You see, we used to have a drink together occasionally, and I talked to him about his investments. And I don't think, all told, I saw the man more than 20 hours in all the years that I knew him. So why should he make any bequests to me? Could you use the money? Yes, I could. And at the moment, I could very well use it. I see. Mr. Cartwright well, would like to see you now. Thank you. I'll see him in a moment. Well, by the way, you have a Carl Bixby working here. That's right. Do you mind if I talk to him while you're talking to your Mr. Cartwright? Uh, not at all, Marty. I'll I'll send him right in for you. Thank you. Oh, Carl Bixby? Yes. I'm Martin King. Yeah, I know, Mr. Hackett just told me. Yeah, don't be so nervous. Sit down. First of all, tell me, do you, uh, did you know the combination of John Bixby's safe? No. No, I didn't. Well, it seems that I'm the only one outside of Mr. Hackett that didn't know it. My uncle trusted the people he was leaving his money to. I don't get it. Didn't the police tell you? Everybody mentioned in that will knew the combination of that safe, except me and Mr. Hackett. Didn't your uncle trust you? Seems he didn't. Now, let me ask you one of my pet questions. Where were you between the hours of 11 and 2 last night? I was home. I'm in bed. Listen, if what you say is true, young man, you're in the clear. Thanks, Mr. King. Well, what are you so jumpy about? Look, all the possible suspects are going to be checked on, aren't they? Oh, you can bet your boots they are. They're going to be checked and double-checked. Yeah. Mr. Kane, I want to take you into my confidence. Shoot. I went to law school for three years. I was about to take my bar exam when... I ran into a little trouble. Yes? Mr. Kane, I'm an ex-convict. What? I served two years up at Sing Sing. Right now I'm out on parole. Nobody here at my job knows anything about it. I see. They find out about it, I'll be fired for sure. And then what? An ex-convict, a parolee looking for a job. No, wait a minute. The police aren't as tough as you think you are. They are. Why, you won't lose your job. I'll talk to the captain and the parole officer. Now, tell me, were you aware of that request that was made to you? Yes, sir. Did your uncle tell you? No. Then how did you know? Well, it was about, uh, about four or five months ago. He was, he was ill. And convalescing. And bring me my diary from the safe, will you? Thank you, Carl. All right, put it back, will you please? And Carl, you've been a pretty good boy. A pretty good boy. You've measured up much better than I expected. Oh, you've been a disappointment. A blot on the family. And I've never really forgiven you. But I may help you a little, Carl. Kane, I want to be on the up and up with you. I, I did look in that diary. I guess I was curious, and I found out exactly what my Uncle Will was going to be, including my own bequest. Well, was there any indication in that will that Henry, uh, or in the diary that Henry Hackett was mentioned? No, sir. Mr. B well? Mr. Bixby, Mr. Hackett wants you in the dressing room. Mm. 
I'm depending on you, Mr. Kane. I'll do the best I can. All right, Steve, that does it. Thanks, Shirley, you're a doll. <laughs> yes, a doll. And a murder suspect. As are you and Rhonda Noble. Where were you, Shirley West, between the hours of 11 and 2? I went to a movie. Got home about a quarter of 12. Couldn't sleep. Read until about 3 and then popped off. How about you? Home in bed. Were you? Now, what do you mean by that? Look, Steve, I knew you wanted me to do these letters for you today. What's that got to do with it? Well, I... I was going to be tied up all day with work I had to do for Mr. Bixby. I had meant to tell you, but it slipped my mind. I still don't get the connection. Well, when I got out of the movie, I suddenly remembered. I knew you were depending on me, and I didn't want to disappoint you, so I... I stopped by your ap apartment and rang the bell. That was at 11.30. So? There was no answer. So what did you do then? I went home. As I told you, I couldn't sleep. I called you on the telephone at 2.15. There was no answer that time, either. Did you, uh, tell this to the police? Did you? No. Uh, no, I didn't. I, uh, I didn't want to complicate things. Were you home, Steve? Yes. Yes, I was. That's the truth, Shirley. I was tired, dog tired. I heard the bell ring at 11.30. And I heard the phone ring a little later that night. But I was just too tired. I didn't want to be disturbed by anybody. That's the truth, Shirley. So help me. All right, come on, Hap. Will you get on the ball? Give me a pouch of old briar, please. Mr. Kane, if anybody else talks to me like that, I'm afraid I'd use my mild, sweet, good-natured temper. Oh. But uh, here you are. Old Briar, the master mixture of rare flavor and aroma. Yes, yes, I know all about it. Now, tell me, what's the pitch, Captain? Well, according to Ross's report from the lab, the bequest on the bottom of the will was made sometime after the will was signed. A different pen and a different ink. Oh, uh, what about the handwriting? Looks like Bixby. Seems to be the same handwriting that signed the will. Hey, uh -huh. what's the law book? Oh, I, I, I borrowed this from a little old librarian lady. I'm going to do a little heavy reading. Tonight. Reading? Yes. What about? Will? Wills, I find them very interesting. Yeah. Well, got to be going. Where to now, Marty? Rhonda Noble. Ah, uh, you're going to do that heavy reading at a bar or some nightclub? Well, I'm going to try. See you later. <laughs> right. uh, I'll see you later, too, okay. Happy. I'm going down to headquarters. Hello, Happy. Hi there, Jim. How's the acting profession these days? Pretty good, Happy. I just signed up to do a series of television shows. My part calls for me to smoke a pipe, so naturally I drop by to get some help. Television, eh? Good, yeah. good. Well, since you're going to smoke a pipe, you need a good pipe tobacco to go with it. Not only good, Happy, but mild, real mild. Well, there's no problem there. The mildest one there is. Jill's best. Flavor cut for extra mildness and cool smoking. Mm, you're sure this is the one I want, huh? Why, sure I'm sure, and I'll show you why. You see here how every particle this Dill's Best is cut to just the right size for perfect smoking? That means that Dill's Best is going to burn evenly and slowly in your pipe. But uh, about as mildness. Well, well, that's just the point. Since flavor cut makes it burn evenly and slowly, yeah. Dill's Best not only is going to give you mild smoke, but a cool one, too. Sounds like that's it, Happy. Now, here's something else, Kim. You see this Dill's Best pouch? Yeah. Well, that's going to make you look like a real professional pipe smoker. You see how wide that opens at the top? Yeah. You dip your pipe in there nice and easy and you fill her up. It's a cinch, you see that? Uh-huh. Then when you're finished, you fold it down nice and tight, just like that, and you slip it right in the pocket. Say, that does look easy. Uh, how much, Happy? Just 15 cents for the Dill's Best. The advice is free. Oh, uh, Jim, uh, I'm not the type of fellow that uh, asks favors, but, uh, you know, I used to do a little acting myself, and I thought that maybe that now that you have the television show that... Uh, well, you could get me a small part of... Maybe I could do the commercials or something. Oh, you're kidding. You're kidding. You, an actor on television? <laughs> I admit you're awful good in selling this deal's best. But for real television commercials? Mm-mm. Boy, you're just not the type. Not the type. I'll be seeing you. Yeah. I guess you're right, Jim.
Uh, sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Keene, but she'll be through with the number in a few seconds. Well, just what are her exact hours? Well, I'll tell you. Now, she does a full routine upstairs. She comes down here for one number. Uh -huh. She's through at 10.30. She goes out and comes back for the late show at 2.30. I see. And the same boyfriend picks her up every night at 10.30. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Same boyfriends every night at 2.30. Oh, thank you. Hey, you're not bad, eh? Oh, I'd say she's excellent. Thank you. Oh. I was told you wanted to talk with me. Oh, uh, this yes. is Martin King. Oh. Well, if it's on that John Bixby business, I'm going to tell you the same thing I told the police. I'm not answering any questions for anybody, period. But why, Miss Noble? Because I don't have to, that's why. If anybody thinks I'm mixed up in it, let them try and prove it. Everybody's got a private life. Mine stays private. <laughs> what you uh, call a hostile witness. Yeah, yeah. Call it what you wish. Is there uh, anything else, Mr. Kane? There's nothing else, Miss Noble. Hey, uh, that's the boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Every night for the past six months at 10.30 sharp. Including last night? Uh-huh. Yeah. Now, let me freshen up your drink, Mr. Kane. All right. Oh, look. Look, no more of that now. Uh, please, you got a phone? I'd like to use a phone. Come right at you, Mr. Right. Kane. Here it is. Fine, thanks. Yes. Oh, oh, Marty, they told me to tell you as soon as you call. Yeah, the captain's having a big shindig with the whole bunch down at John Bixby's house. Yeah, yeah, a conference. A regular showdown. Okay. Uh, yes, sir, can I help you? Uh, yeah, let me have a pouch of model. Right you are, sir. Model, the finest ten cents worth of tobacco you can smoke. Did you say ten cents? Yes, sir, I said ten cents, and still only ten cents, by the way, and plenty mild, too. Ah, uh, well, that's the way I like it. And a can of Copenhagen, too. Right you are, sir. Copenhagen. It's the best made, you know. Oh, I'll say I know. I've been using it at the plant for years. Shall I open, sir? Oh, yeah, thanks. Say, that's really fresh. Well, it should be, but the date right on it. Uh, let's see now. Ten for the model, fifteen for Copenhagen. Exactly right. 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 Five. Thank you very much, and come again, sir. Thank huh? you. Thank you. Cops aren't dumb. Let's get that straight once and for all. For instance, you, Steve Judson. We happen to know that there was no answer to your doorbell at 11.30, and at 2.15, your phone didn't answer. And we, you, we know about you. You've been seeing this girl for the past six months. May I make a statement, Captain? It'll be a pleasure to hear from you, Mr. Hackett, and it's about time. Well, I... Met Miss Noble through Mr. John Bixby. Oh, yeah? Yes. We... we fell in love, and we intend to be married shortly. We didn't give this information to Mr. John Bixby because we thought he might not approve of her plans for being married. But from a practical viewpoint, Captain, it also might have jeopardized her legacy. Yeah, look, Hackett, uh, we're not interested in, in all these things that you're talking about. But, and this is a big but, because of your friendship with this lady, you might have learned the combination of the safe from her. And in that case? In that case, what's to stop you from breaking in here, opening that safe, getting a look at the will, and pumping a couple of bullets into your friend Bixby, huh? and Now, wait a minute. Now, you wait a minute. The will verified what you expected. Rhonda Noble gets 25%, which makes it close to a million, and there's a booby prize for you of 25,000. You knock the guy off, and uh, you're rich. Very rich. Yes, you make a nice husband and wife team. And we happen to know that you can use that dough right now. May I say a word, Captain? Well, a word from you? Why, who could stop you from saying a word? Go ahead, type that word. Make it quick, will you? Uh, do, you uh, do you have the will on your person? The will on my person? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, I got the will on my person. Oh, fine, thanks. Oh, uh, Mr. Hackett, would you uh, write your signature on here, please? Why, the handwriting isn't even similar. You're absolutely right, Captain. Mr. Bixby, would you uh, put your signature on there, please? Thank you. Oh, this handwriting isn't similar either. What kind of crazy magician stuff are you trying to pull? Look at that carefully, Captain. Look at those pen strokes. Look at the color of the ink. Hey, wait a minute. 
If that's up there. What? You mean this guy forged the bequest to Henry Hackett? That's exactly what he did for over two hours here last night. You see, Carl is, in a, is a professional forger. The parole board told me about that. They took Carl out of circulation for a couple of years because of his special talent in that direction. Sit down. You mean Hackett put him up to this? No, no. Then I... why, why did he forge a bequest of $25,000 in favor of Henry Hackett? I'm coming to that. He became interesting to me when he told me that he didn't know the combination of the safe. But that's what he told us. Then he told me another story about getting the diary one day for his uncle when he was ill. But how could he do that if he didn't know the combination? That's where he slipped up just that once. Say, nice going, Marty. Yeah. Now, I also found out that he was a lawyer for the past three uh, He studied law for three years. Well, what's that got to do with it? It's got everything to do with it. That why, that's why that bequest was uh, written at the bottom of the will to Henry Hackett. But why Henry Hackett? Just a red herring. I still don't get it, Marty. You will in a minute. Let me find it here. Here. It says, uh, a will to be valid must be subscribed by the testator at the physical end. Otherwise, probate will be denied. Oh, yeah? If, after the signature, there is more writing of a depository nature... Then the will is not signed at the end and is void in its entirety. My authority, in Ree Robinson's Will 103, New York Supplement, second, page 967, decided April the 20th, 1951. Hey, it's beginning to creep up on me. So, if he could have gotten away with it and the will was thrown out, no will, who would uh, become the beneficiary? He would. He's the only living relative. Well, yeah, that's yeah. very good it, work, Marty. Nice That's the point, huh? Yeah. So, man commits a murder. He, uh... He gets rid of uh, the gun, the knife, uh, the ice pick, uh, so because he knows it's going to be used against him. Yeah. But a little old fountain fan here, all he does is put it back in his pocket and forget about it. It puts me in mind of the old axiom, Captain. And uh, what is that, Marty? Well, even in these times, the pen is mightier than the sword. <laughs> Good old Martin Kane. Eh? Yeah, he's getting to be a regular Philadelphia lawyer, isn't he, huh? Yeah, he certainly did a wonderful job hugging that law book as if it were a football and he was heading for a touchdown. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look, look, he's still hugging it. Oh, oh hello. 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 Say, say, listen, a little old librarian lady will be along here. And uh, uh, she wants this. Uh, I'm not in the mood for but little Mr. old librarian Kane. ladies. Mr. Kane, would I... you uh, would you give her to her uh, for me, please, Sergeant? But, but Mr. Kane, what? Well, well uh, look, please, as a special favor. Well, of course, if you wish. Thanks. Martin, she called that she. No, no. But listen, she said that she look, was. Look, I'm got... Sorry, I, I'm, I've got time. I, I, I... I was told to pick up a law book. Oh, a law book, <laughs> right here. Uh, yes, Miss, I, I, I have it right here. Yes, but uh, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. book right now. Uh, uh, listen, uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to tell you. The old lady called and said she was sending her daughter down, but maybe next time you listen. Yes. Yes, Happy, the next time I will definitely listen. Good night, Happy. Good night, Martin. Good night, folks. See you next week. Martin Kane, Private Eye, has been brought to you by the makers of those four distinctively different pipe tobaccos. Briar, the master mixture of rare flavor and aroma. Dill's best flavor cut for extra mildness and cool smoking. Model so high in quality, so low in price. And Tweed, the shaggy rough cut tobacco. One of the four, just right for your tobacco taste. William Gargan also appears weekly in the other exciting series of Martin Kane, Private Eye, on radio over another network. Check your local newspaper for time and station. NBC Television.